Hi, I'm Joe from the Leeds 2013 iGEM team and I'm going to give you a brief introduction to synthetic biology. Synthetic biology is a new field of research in the biosciences and unlike traditional systems biology which aims to study complex biological systems in the natural world, synthetic biology aims to redesign natural systems at a genetic level to solve engineering problems. Synthetic biologists use the tools of molecular geneticists, which we'll go into later, but instead of modifying the genes in an organism to discover how they work, we remove, repackage and reorder genes to be inserted into a bacteria, allowing us to create and modify functions within the organism. One of the most exciting aspects of synthetic biology is that it is not limited to biologists. Although it is based on molecular genetics, it uses tools and ideologies from other fields to solve all kinds of problems. Physicists and computer technicians help create bacterial microchips. Engineers and biotechnologists have worked together to create genetic machines with biomedical applications. Even rocket scientists are getting in on the act, sending bacteria into space. Synthetic biology is a young field and one of the biggest players is the iGEM competition. This is an academic competition run by MIT in the States with the aim of creating parts and practices in synthetic biology. One of the main aims of the iGEM competition is to produce a functional biobrick. A biobrick is a word for a length of DNA, our genetic code, that performs a function. For example, a biobrick could be a gene that codes for a protein that will light up when produced, which can be used as an indication that something has happened in the cell, because obviously all the cells are far too small to simply look in and observe. Or a biobrick could code for a protein that will send a message to other bacteria in the system, working like an electrical circuit or a computer chip. Biobricks are also made so that they can easily be added together, which allows people to mix and match genes and create bacteria that do entirely new things not seen in nature. In the past, iGEM teams have used other people's biobricks, combined with new ones of their own devices, to create genetically engineered machines. In 2009, the University of Pavia in Italy inserted genes into bacteria that would allow it to live in the way that is thrown away when making milk and use novel enzymes to convert the lactose to ethanol for use in biofuels. Also in 2009, the team from Cambridge created genes for different coloured proteins and made living paints out of bacteria. The 2007 team from Toronto built a bacterial neural network with two types of bacteria. One would detect a red light, sending messages to the other cell type, which would then emit a flash of blue light with the same duration and intensity as the original making the start of a bacterial computer. Other teams have done many interesting things, such as bacteria that can be added to food packaging, changing colour when the food goes off. And last year, in 2012, the Stanford Brown team created biobricks that can be inserted into bacteria, allowing it to survive the harsh environment of space and detect any other living organisms that could be out there. We are the University of Leeds 2013 iGEM team. It's the first year a team has been put together from the students at Leeds University. Like all good synthetic biology teams, we are a cross-disciplinary team made of chemists, physicists, nanotechnologists and biochemists who are arguably the most important and attractive members of the team. For our project, we have designed a modular system that will allow our bacterial cell to detect a molecule in solution, bind to it and then activate all the other bacterial cells to light up. We'll go more into the details of our project in another video, but it will allow us to have a low-cost, zero-electricity system that could detect, say, influenza in a blood sample, toxins in a water supply, gold particles in an ore vein, or nutrients in soil samples. Since this is a bacterial colony, it does not require electricity or fuel, only agar gel, allowing it to function in developing nations. And because it will light up when it detects something, it can be read by the naked eye. Synthetic biology, like any form of genetic engineering, not only has many risks involving the lab work, but also many ethical and moral issues that surround modifying the genetics of a living organism. Ethical issues regarding synthetic biology have been well characterised already and we'll go into more detail in another video. But people are obviously keen to avoid public backlash or confusion, which is something that has happened in the past involving controversial scientific research. But it could be said that we also have a responsibility to act and use the knowledge and tools granted to us to try and create a better world for ourselves and those around us. If you have an interest in synthetic biology, there are many ways you can get involved. For example, part of the judging criteria for the iGEM competition is the team's outreach programmes. So get on the web and see how other teams have been spreading the word on SynBio. 
There are websites dedicated to educating the public on this exciting new field. As the field explodes, courses and conferences are springing up all across the globe. You could visit one and mingle with the academic elite and listen to presentations on science that could change the world. One of the great things about synthetic biology is that it is a very open field. We're eager to have more people involved in helping out. All the genetic code for the Biobricks is made publicly available. You could download it, synthesize some DNA, stick it in some bacteria and away you go. I mean, that's if you have access to a molecular biology laboratory and not all of us are that lucky. If not, why not look up DIY Biology? It's a global campaign to start local projects that would get amateur scientists into makeshift labs and get them thinking about synthetic biology and how you can help. If you're really up to the challenge, there's an iGEM High School Division competition. Many universities also run synthetic biology courses now, and you could work towards putting together a team, like we have, for the collegiate iGEM competition, and getting into some real synthetic biology for yourself.